Tonight I'm going to turn this hybrid blank into a pen for you. And <laughs> there's some interesting aspects to this. It started out being two blanks, ended up being one. I chose a kit for it, and in the end, I didn't like the kit, so I made a decision and swapped the kit. So a couple of things happened along the way, which I think might make it kind of fun and interesting. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to take you straight over to the lathe, and we're going to get started turning. For those of you who would like to know how I go about preparing a hybrid blank, which we'll call this an acrylic style blank, uh, for turning, I'm going to put a link in the comments below to a little video that I did that will explain in detail all the steps I take to prep a blank for turning. This is an Illumilite and Mopani hybrid blank sent to me by John Barnes. Now John is a fellow, you might remember I turned another blank his a while back. We met at a car show in Louisville and he presented me with this blank and a construction paper blank. And when I prepared this blank, I made the same mistake that I made on the construction paper blank, and that is I did not paint the inside of the blank. So what I did is I took the other half of the blank, and I thought orange would be a nice contrasting color, so I painted the inside of the blank orange, and then we're going to turn both blanks and see which one looks better. I'm going to make the best looking blank with a pen kit sent to me by Dennis Dower. It is a Mesa kit, P-K-M-E-S-A-G-U-N, in gunmetal. It's a beautiful kit. I've never turned one of these before, so I'm anxious to turn it. It uses the same size bushings as the Wall Street, the Sierra, all the other pins that I've been turning recently that use the 2764 inch kit. This blank is absolutely beautiful. The only space I think I can see part of the tube might be right here, just on the edge. And that may not be a huge deal. The rest of it looks pretty darn good. I'm anxious to see what it looks like with the orange behind it. Absolutely beautiful piece of wood in here. The only issue I had with this blank was this Mopani was hard. Uh, I was using my roughing gouge and I just, it, it was, I had to put so much pressure that when I came off the end, I could feel myself dishing out the softer Illumilite. I switched over to a skew, which didn't do much better. And finally, I went ahead and grabbed, um, I have an easy wood uh, rougher, and I grabbed that and used that on edge on a 45 degree angle to uh, clean this up a little bit. What I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and micro mesh this blank uh, just to get every single scratch out of this um, Illumilite. And then we'll, we'll set it aside, we'll let it dry while we turn the other one. And then once the other one's turned, we'll do the same thing to it. And then we'll bring this one back to the lathe and we'll put a CA finish on it to take care of the wood. I just finished micro meshing the blank. I really like how it looks. You can see that the wood darkened up a little bit. Um, that could be a result of the moisture in it. It does look like it's lightening up a little bit over here. So hopefully it's just the moisture. Uh, but also the red pigment was quite heavy. Had to really scrub my micro mesh pads uh, after using them to get that pigment out of them. Uh, I, I still notice this little uh, spot on the end where you can see the tube. I'm a little... I think I can hide some of it with the with the the uh, clip, but I'd really like to put the clip right here and leave this wood section showing. We'll see what happens. Uh, 
That's other than that, it's beautiful. I'm gonna lay it aside to dry, and we're gonna go ahead and turn the uh, one with the orange paint and see how that looks. Well, I'm not a happy camper. I'm not as good with carbide as I'd like to be, and I'm sure this was a catch on my part. I, I just, it had to be. I mean, I didn't feel it, I didn't see it, but it had to be. I was able to find this piece, which was laying on the back of my lathe table. It didn't come from here. It came from here. <laughs> it looks like it came from right at this section here as it peeled off the other side. Um, I did see something fall into the dust collector and go back. I pulled the top off of my dust collector. I got into the into the um, barrel and searched and searched, and I couldn't find anything. I, then I shook the hose to see if maybe it got stuck in one of the ribs, and it wasn't. So if I have lost this blank. Um, actually, l l let's let's say it like this: the other blank is automatically going to win because I've screwed this blank up. What I'm going to do is take this blank, and I've been collecting anything I mess up like this. I've been st sticking in a um, a little uh, box back here and I'll, I'll play with this with some casting later on and I'll attempt to cast something else over the other end to see if I can you know I can turn it into something um, I'm sure there was a catch but as I look at this let's let's look at something here look at that might not have been a lot of glue under there I might have I might have been glue deficient which may have been what allowed the catch to happen I know Zach Higgins recently did a video on that. This was already put, look at that, it's loose on that side too. I don't know if I pulled it loose or if it was glue deficient. Yep, see, it's like a little fingernail there. Look at that, see it move? You can see, if you watch down here, you'll see it move. So this was glued up before Zach's video. Uh, now that I've seen his video, I'll be using some of his techniques and I'll put a link to that video down below. But it talks about once you've got your tube and your blank, he puts a little glue around the outer edge and lets it soak down in to make sure voids like this don't happen. So I'm not sure if uh, it was glue deficient or if when I peeled it off, that, that cutter is so aggressive that I pulled it loose. Not sure, but uh, this blank you will see again. I'm going to turn it into a junk wood casting. Uh, I'll use another color resin and see if I can kind of accent it a little bit, uh, but it should it should look pretty good. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna get the other blank, we'll get it back on the lathe, and we'll get the CA put on it, the CA finish, get it buffed up, and we'll get that one installed into a pin kit. This blank ended up drying overnight, and by the time I got to it, the wood was good and dry. So I went ahead and applied uh, five coats of thin CA and three coats of medium, and I think the blank looks pretty good. It's got a nice little shine to it, and I think when I hit it with the micro mesh, it's really gonna buff up and look good. Just look at the difference that micro mesh makes. That blank looks amazing. All right, let me get uh, my buffing wheels on the lathe and we'll go ahead and buff this blank up and uh, it's gonna look fantastic. <clears throat> okay. I get asked all the time what this blue block is that I charge the wheel with and it's just a polishing rouge. Uh, I'm not sure, some people have told me uh, via comments on my website that it's about a 3,000 3, grit, uh, but I honestly could not tell you because there was no information. It came with the buffing system and there really was no information on what the grit of this particular uh, block of rouge was or is. I probably sped up the video for the buffing of this blank to at least uh, double speed. So you might not have noticed this. It was completely accidental and I didn't realize it until I had already started buffing the blank on the first wheel. I had 
set my lathe to, to the maximum RPMs. Normally I run it right about at its middle setting, uh, but I just thought, I started to stop and fix it, and I thought, why not let it go and see what uh, what difference it makes? And really, I can't tell any difference. It didn't burn the finish or anything. The pin looks fantastic, or the blank looks fantastic. Let me get it over to my assembly table, and we'll get this pressed into a kit. I brought my blank over to the assembly table, and I was getting ready to assemble it, and I got to looking at this Mesa kit, and just take a look at that. It's beautiful. It is a gunmetal kit. Well, when I look at that gunmetal finish next to this blank it just doesn't look right um, especially with a little bit of gold showing through from the tube so what i think i'm going to do is i happen to have a kit from rockler here this is a gold manhattan from rockler it's a uh, gold and black and i think this is going to be a better fit for that pin so i'm going to make an executive decision and we're going to put these parts back in the bag save them for a kit that's going to look better with gunmetal a dark kit and we're going to go ahead and get the Rockler kit out on the table. We'll come back and get it assembled. Let's see how the Manhattan kit looks with the blank. I'm looking for the end with the brass it shows, and that's this end. And as I put the kit together, you see, I think that's going to be a much nicer looking kit for this particular blank. I'm a little fuzzy there. And I think it's going to work out way better with this particular kit. I absolutely love gunmetal's one of my favorites. And I'm going to save that kit for a, for a very special blank. Let me just find a good spot to locate this clip. Man, I don't want to hide any of the wood. I'm thinking, I'm thinking the back of this blank may be the best place to put it right there. All right. Let me go ahead and press this together. Whoa. I bumped all my parts there. Got a little bit out of the camera, very sorry about that, but I'll bring it up and let you take a look at it. Got a really nice fit. Now, I tell you what, I wish I would have had that little piece of wood showing. Let's go ahead and uh, put the rest of this kit together. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm bumping the camera and everything tonight. <laughs> oh well, it all works out in the end, doesn't it? That Manhattan's got nice action to it. You can hear the grease in there. Hear that? <laughs> That'll eventually work out. All right, now take a look at that. That actually is a beautiful pin. I think I made the right decision going with this particular kit over the Mesa. I'm very happy with it because the gold kind of hides the fact that a little bit of that tube is showing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of fun, uh, the whole process. Sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. But uh, it's, it's all good in the end, and I had a great time turning for you tonight. I'll give you one last look at the pen. I'm really happy with it now. I ended up with a great final product, and I couldn't be happier with how it looks. Thank you very much, John, for sending me this blank. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun to turn. I hope to meet you again, possibly at the car show next year. We can hang out for a little bit. I want everybody to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening, everybody.